Hello, folks, and thank you for joining us for another JS Drop from this dot. Micro front ends are growing in popularity, but what are they? What problems do they solve, and what are the pros and cons of using them? These are just some of the questions that Adam Barrett will answer in this week's drop. So without further ado, let's hear from Adam. Hi, I'm Adam Barrett, and I am going to be talking about the age of micro front ends. Um, so with the advancement of two major technologies, I believe the age of micro front ends has actually begun. And we're going to see micro front ends be ubiquitous and as well known as microservices are. Right There's two technologies that are unlocking this are container queries in the browser and uh, module federations are being released from the shackles of Webpack. And so with those two things, I think the age of micro front ends has really begun. So I think you should get to know it a little, and I'm going to help you with that. So what are micro front ends? Uh, as things get popular, the buzzwords start to lose their meaning a bit. People sort of adapt it to their own uses. And it gets fuzzy, especially when money is involved. So I don't think I'm going to say anything contentious in this talk, but I do feel the need to say, this is what I think as a caveat. So as we get into the definitions and descriptions, you may be thinking uh, something along the lines of, oh, well, we're already doing that. Or isn't that just, and you're probably right. I think the problem is there's a misconception that, you see, micro front ends aren't an architecture to scale your applications, but rather they're an architecture that enables a way to scale your teams. Uh, no, not those teams, uh, teams, because they enable you to have these cross-functional high performance teams from like design to database on one small team. So you have your designer, your developers, your database admin, that kind of thing, all on one small team delivering one small section of a product. Um, I'm not going to get into the tech in this talk. Um, this is more like a high level discussion, but there's lots of talks out there that talk about how to, about to get into micro front ends, how to like do the actual coding of it and stuff. You can find those. This is more just a high overview. What I am going to talk about is what micro front ends are, what problems they solve, some pitfalls and trade offs, and of course, tools you can use to mitigate some of the problems. So, as an industry, we kind of realize that front end isn't just like a single node in an architecture diagram. It's as complex, if not more, and as important as any API endpoint. So I would say that micro front ends are a natural progression of the effort to create vertical slices of functionality that originally brought on microservices. With one important difference, with microservices, your deliverable was an API endpoint. And in micro front ends, your deliverable is a component. And what kind of component? Well, that sort of depends on what you're working with. It could be a React component, it could be a web component, it could be some sort of PHP thing that I don't know about. It's whatever your framework sort of decides is a component. But like a component, your micro front end could be a whole page or it, your component may uh, take over all the subroots of one page or it may even just be a block on a page. So what do I mean by vertical slicing? Let me explain. So in a web application, we generally have sort of three areas. There's the front end, the back end, and the database. And when you start your app or you're like start up your startup, you generally have one team and that team does it all. And then as you know, things grew and we realized there were certain specializations and unique challenges to both things, we split into the front end and the back end. And then as our application became more complex and we started developing patterns and best practices and someone started talking about domain-driven design, uh, at some point, the team started to break into pieces. And this is when we started down the path of microservices, independently built and deployed subsystems that handle a vertical slice, a vertical slice of the business. Independently built and deployed is important. We'll come back to that later. But um, they usually have their own database. They're bounded to like a, a bounded context in uh, domain driven design, design terms. It's a specialization and uh, it generally... It's uh, dealt with with an API endpoint. Is it a panacea? No, there are problems. And the blowback for microservices definitely came, as it always does. But with everything, there's trade-offs. And microservices allow some businesses to move faster and have more stable systems if done correctly. So in this diagram, we have three teams here. There's the product team, the Inspire team, the checkout team. And there are they have their APIs that they're delivering and there's an aggregation layer. The front end team really just deals with you know, one API thing. They don't really know about the split of the microservices, but the microservices are all independent teams deploying whenever they need to without coordination with anything else. So if we move the line up a little bit, so in microservices, uh, an API is a deliverable, but what if the team delivers 
a JavaScript client. Like Twilio has examples of this where they're like Twilio video and Twilio sync clients. There's lots of examples of different businesses that give a offer a JS client. The API endpoint exists, yes. Um, but they have these like cross-discipline teams focused on a vertical slice of the product. And so their deliverable is a JS client. The front-end developer consuming them isn't responsible for calling an API endpoint or negotiating a web socket connection. They just initialize an instance of the class and then interact with that class instance. So now, if you take that to the next logical step, here we have micro front ends where a component is the deliverable. And some team in this diagram, uh, the UI team, just sort of slots your micro front end component uh, into the page wherever it's needed or as the page, whatever. In this setup, we still have that aggregation there, but it's way up on the front end here. Uh, and it, presumably this is where design would be responsible for like keeping a UX consistent. So now, uh, what if we go further? You'll often see this diagram in micro front end talks. Uh, if these are really completely independent from each other, I would argue that you just have three apps at this point. So I believe that this is actually micro front ends. Independently buildable and deployable, yes, um, but with a aggregation layer, in this case, the UI team. So that was important distinction for microservices, and it's the same here because independently buildable and deployable is the part that brings the benefits. So, now that we know what micro front ends are at kind of a high level, let's talk about what problems they solve. So micro front ends are a tool for dealing with complexity. Overly complex apps get bugs or harder to work with. And uh, developers maybe don't want to touch it because they might break it or something. So this is a great quote that I always go back to. Uh, the secret to building large apps is never build large apps. Break your application into small pieces, then assemble those testable bite-sized pieces into your big application, Justin Meyer. Uh, micro front ends is that. It's about cutting things into smaller pieces. It's about finding those bounded contexts, those parts that can be separated from the rest of the app and can live independently for whatever reason, be that like business structure or product line or a, a dependency, who knows. Uh, and the team can be focused to fulfill their contract, which is like a component. Uh, without having to worry about the system as a whole. It's decoupling from end to end. So complexity comes from when systems are interacting with each other. So reducing dependencies and reducing communication lines and being more explicit about those creates simpler, more stable systems. But vertical slices are an art, art form. And you're probably not going to get them right the first time, but we can talk about that in a little bit. So the second problem that micro front end solve is businesses need to move quickly. They need to iterate and innovate. Uh, speed is of delivery is a business advantage and react as is reacting to user feedback. So you've probably seen this graph before, but basically the idea is any team over two people has diminishing returns because exponential, exponential communication lines. Small teams are better. Two pizza teams, whatever you want to call it. This is even intuitive, right? If you talk about like Oh, let's have 50 developers working the same app. That sounds like a recipe for disaster, but 10, sorry, five teams of 10 developers working on different sections of the app, that sounds pretty reasonable. But it's not only the small teams and simpler apps that keep businesses speedy, it's also the ability to experiment. Uh, and micro front ends really enable this. Maybe you want to try a new feature. Well, you just make a micro front end and maybe deliver that to a select group of users. Or maybe you want to try a new JS framework that's hot or a new library. Uh, see if you can just replace a part of it with micro front ends. And that's easy because that's what micro front ends do. So with these micro front ends, the teams are small and cross-functional and they'll be able to experiment because they don't just have to convince the whole, sorry, they don't have to convince the whole company. They just have to convince their immediate peers of trying something new. Uh, and sometimes new products and features can even come out of this with little POCs popping up with, because they don't need uh, coordination with other teams, you know, minimal or no coordination. Another problem micro front solve is domain expertise. Complex systems require a lot of expertise. And at some point, it's better to have many specialists than generalists. But being an expert in, in the entire system is usually a fool's game. So uh, micro front end teams allow you to sort of become specialists in your slice. So mastering like your programming language or your framework can certainly make you more effective. But gaining expertise in the business domain will help you understand the problems better. It'll help you. Uh, make better abstractions, anticipate problems or needs before they arise. And so micro front ends, the vertical slices, along with the cross-functional teams, and can allow you to sort of really dig into your slice of the business domain. And they can get that knowledge early and effectively. And then uh, the last problem is like keeping your software dependencies up to date. 
In the same way that microfinance allow you to experiment, they also allow you for keeping dependencies and techniques up to date. It's much easier for a small team to update their dependencies because they have smaller systems. But it also allows them to try new versions in experiments. Or you know, you're gonna have pieces of the app upgrade incrementally because that's just how microfinance work. And like keeping dependencies is kind of like a, a savings retirement. It's easier if you just always do it rather than having like to stop and like one big push every now and then. And this is good for security because older versions leave vulnerabilities behind. Uh, new techniques are easier to adopt and honestly, less code, less breadth of code uh, has less areas that are neglected. And equally as important as security is developer happiness. Developers like having things up to date because they can try new things. They have less people to convince to try a new technique if that's what you're doing. And you'll never get in that situation where you're unable to use the hot new feature because you're stuck in an old version of something. So these are the problems that they solve, but what are the downsides? What are the pitfalls? Um, let's talk about these quickly. Some of the problems you might run into. Uh, duplicate dependencies and bloated. One of the first complaints you'll hear about micro front ends involves this duplication of dependencies and bloated application code. That's because browsers have this unique problem where more dependencies equals a bigger payload, which actually affects user experience. So if every team brings in their framework, like the Svelte team and the React team and the, the Angular team all are having their framework, that's going to be a lot of JavaScript sent to the browser. And if every team is even using the same thing, you might have that, you know, that old seven jQueries on this same page problem. Only it's worse now because it's like seven of a lot of the th things. Uh, now, as I mentioned before, module federation can actually mitigate this problem a lot by reducing the duplicate dependencies. It's great, you should look into it. Recently decoupled from Webpack. And maybe just agreeing as a company to like, oh, use one framework, oh, we're gonna be a React shop. That'll, that'll help mitigate the problem a bit, but it also removes some of the benefits. So there's a trade-off there. A problem is environmental differences. Uh, this basically means like, where you develop something is different from where it's deployed. I think in micro front ends, an easy example to understand is like global CSS will affect your micro front end if you don't do something about it. Uh, there's other examples, but they're all kind of the same idea. Web components can help you mitigate this feature uh, or this problem story, uh, specifically with the Shadow DOM API. Iframes could also be a good choice for like absolute isolation, but they come with their own problems. So there's trade offs again. So operational complexity is sort of a big problem with micro front ends. This would include things like Testing your entire application, it's gonna require multiple coordinating front ends or needing to have different applications running in development just to like test like one feature. Um, debugging and tracking a problem across different systems can be a problem. Uh, dealing with versioning, versioning can be a problem. A lot of these can be dealt with, with uh, monorepo tools. So things like NX, Turbo Repo, Lerna. Uh, you should look into them. They can help mitigate a lot of these kind of operational complexity problems. What they won't help with though, is governance complexity. So this would be like the idea that development practices are different and decentralized. So they're less controllable, essentially. Like all the teams are gonna do their own thing. And maybe you like possibly have more stuff and different stuff that you have to like vet for quality or security. And like, how do you ensure a minimum level of quality and consistency across all these teams doing independent things? And then, if you have all these teams doing whatever they are differently, what if staff needs to move? Like things change, emergencies cause people need to shift around or you need to cover somebody or something. And if these teams are completely different, oh, the Angular team and the React team are different, is moving gonna be easy? And then what if you like have parts of the system that like, oh, multiple people control, so who owns it? Who controls that area? And there's like an old saying about like, the fastest way to starve a horse is to have two people assigned to feed it. Same with software development. If you don't explicitly say this person is, this team is responsible for this area, this micro app, whatever it is, it's going to get neglected. And I don't really have any solutions to mitigate these problems. They're not really uh, possible to have technical solutions to because just like with microservices, they're inherent to micro front ends. And every attempt to mitigate these problems removes some of the benefits. So it's all about trade offs. Another important thing to recognize with microfrontends is that users don't experience your company or products in isolation. They don't think of the split of teams. So how do you ensure a consistent ex experience across so many teams operating independently? Uh, one way to mitigate this is to have a design system with a style guide and a component library. Um, there's lots of different tools that'll help you like for creating a design system. But what I mean specifically here is a place where design and development come together and have a space and a language for keeping the UX consistent across the teams. 
I would advise like having a UI team like I had in the diagram to be a sort of in charge of a component library and they work with design to get that up and running. And then the components sort of are consumed by the micro front end teams where they create their you know, end to end experiences using those components. Uh, it'll keep it consistent. And then you know the, the individual teams can also create their own UI components if they need to. And optimally the UI team would use those components as their backlog for what they need to solve. And object oriented programming and city planning have shown us that humans and developers are just really bad at predicting how things are going to evolve over time. So if you think about it, if you think changing the directory structure is hard when you the abstraction wasn't quite right, try changing the teams because you possibly need to involve HR, right? Or consider like different people's personalities. I can't believe this doesn't actually come up more when talking about micro front ends because the teams are hard coded into the business. If that makes sense, there needs to be a certain malleability for micro front ends to work, but these vertical slices being based on teams sort of make them rigid and inflexible. So maybe the myth of these beautiful vertical slices is really damaging to micro front ends. And we should accept that teams will more accurately be spread across a cluster of nodes within a graph of systems. Uh, you know, and if you can resist Conway's law where like, teams match the business communication structure. Maybe we could see one team be responsible for multiple nodes in an architecture graph, sometimes shifting or adding or removing responsibilities for systems as needed. And maybe we can shed this illusion of micro friends being so neat and tidy and just accept that the deliverable is a component or components and the team's responsibilities are anything that support those components or supporting other teams making micro front ends. And how that plays out into those pretty cylindrical graphs, uh, I don't know. But more, it's more like a collection of related technologies and business domains falling under like a bounded context. But this is all very messy and all very real world and all very business. And I don't like that because this is a talk. So let's go back to our idyllic graph of cross-functional high-performance teams working on vertical slices of functionality that are nicely aggregated for a perfect user experience. That's better. So that's micro front ends. They are not a silver bullet and we've still got a lot to figure out about best practices, supporting tools, but I would like to be the first to welcome you to the age of micro front ends and here there be dragons. If you have any questions, you can hit me up on Twitter. Thanks. Mm -hmm.